couple of sentences about our model system. This is the um, insulated house for, uh, for the fish lab. And they, there are two plastic tubes behind and in, in, uh, beside this, this building. You can see here, this is the building. This is the um, intensive uh, lab scale fish rearing unit. We have this um, 225 uh, square meter greenhouse for, with uh, seven pools, 12 cubic meter each. And we have this 500 square meter uh, greenhouse with the uh, ebb and flow system and also the raft system or deep water culture. So we, we're deriving, they are deriving the figures from these two systems. This is an indoor facility. This is the outdoors, how it looks uh, in real life. And this is the, the greenhouse um, we, are, we are using. And we are, uh, we are running it for three years now. In the first uh, two years, we had uh, <coughs> several plants. We were trying how it comes with the tomatoes, chili, pepper, cucumber, uh, squash, whatever we, we found, we, we stuck into the, in the water. It was interesting that even from the first year, we had no problems with the, with the growth. So it seems that the fish uh, water would serve enough nutrients and uh, these intact clay balls were uh, getting uh, up and, and fast. So there was no initial problems with the, with the plant growth and the nutrient supply at, at all. And then... Can, can you do a little back uh, to, to show what kind of filtration you have? And uh, when you say the beds are enough to uh, take off the nutrients, which quantity of food did you give the experimenter? Some, some data, I guess? We, we use the fish water, the fish yeah, but tank. I mean, uh, which density of fish did you have? That was the normal, like like 50 kilos, roughly, but it was varying. It was uh, the first tries of the, in the system. So it was 10, 15, 20, depending on. So it was not even the, uh, the, in the first two years, even uh, stocking density. No, not all the tanks were up, two, one or two tanks were running. So it was not real experimental setup. Okay. We just wanted to see how the things are going hydrologically, technically, mechanically. Give an idea of the quantity of food per parameter. No, not at the, the nutrient load in the system as well. So it's just, just like like a very extensive uh, stocking density, not much not much water let out. So it, it was like real just the first try. And it, it was a surprise that it, it was enough for the plant. The plants were, were, it were fine. And then uh, now we, we're going um, for the th after the third year, we had good, we had good, um, biological things going down, going up in, in, in that system. So and also herbs, uh, lemon, uh, and then uh, lemon uh, balm, also basil. So it was, it was quite good in, and was flourishing in, in that, that uh, system. So that was the, the technology you see. Uh, we used uh, clay balls. Um, we put these, these plastic uh, containers beneath the system and put the clay balls up. So we had a constant flow of water in the bottom of these uh, ebb and flow systems. It was very good because uh, it, it helped even the aeration, the water uh, circulation. So we don't have any, um, how do you say, um, uh, stagnating water in the system. But when, when, it, when it's the water is down with the siphon, because these these uh, containers are, are covering the, the bottom of that of that uh, mm, tank, the water was flowing and flushing off all the nutrients or, or the residues down in which is down in the bottom of the of the tank. So very simple setup. Uh, there is uh, only uh, concrete blocks on just on the, on the foot of the of the, the, the framework. And then this pump is, is used to, to, f to fill the air between the two layers of, of uh, greenhouse. And there's a roof. Uh, we, we have this uh, ventilation uh, up in the roof. Automatically, we have a thermometer in the, in the house and it opens up if the temperature is, reaches a certain level. Where is the pump for? Is that to increase the insulation? No, it's, yeah, it, it's, it presses air between the two layers of the greenhouse. 
for insulation, uh, for especially for winter time. We have two layers of, of plastic uh, and, and a thick layer of, of, uh, of air in between. So it's uh, practically we have double layer of, of plastic instead of one layer. Yeah, you know, because of microcycle. The insulation for, for winter for the time. Time. For winter time. In summertime, it's not. Well, it's yeah. like we, we open it and then we, we have to try to. to uh, well, we don't, don't we don't have any any real heat problems in the in the greenhouse for for plants because the evapotranspiration it was cooling down. It it was not very hot in a fish uh, uh, cube or uh, plastic tunnel. We had sometimes very high uh, air temperatures. So this is the, um, the system. We use this kind of wooden planks and the HDP foil or, or sheet isolation. So it's very simple. We made it ourselves with a technical, a technical guy who was welding this together. So very, very simple and very effective uh, way. So these were the investment costs. We had uh, 480 square meters exactly. We added 18,540 uh, euros as uh, if you if you uh, 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 extrapolate it extra, extrapolate it into 1,000 square meter. That was the investment costs. Okay, do you need some? With yeah. labor or only materials? It's uh, in, in labor. It was made by a subcontractor. So that was the 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 contracted cost. This is actually what you paid to have it built yes. from scratch, not including the real estate. Yes, the land was university land, but all the things set up was, was there. Uh, you, will, you can have this presentation if you want, um, well, after that. And so you don't have to write the numbers. These are the, the numbers. Um, this is just only half of the, of the tunnel because we made the we used only the ebb and flow system, not the raft system, for, for a herb and for, for a red pepper production. So all these figures are now down to 240 square meters, half of this, uh, of this uh, uh, greenhouse. Uh, you, may, you may observe that the depreciation cost is, is quite high. We pretended that we were an a entrepreneur. So of course, university, we are not calculating depreciation. This is high because the, the investment cost was quite high compared to the running and operation costs. That's, I think it's a phenomenon in, in horticulture or in, in, uh, in aquaculture that you have an expensive investment and you are running it in a very low, for a fairly low cost and then it can sometimes cause a problem in your books that you are, you are positive in income, but the income is not as high as the depreciation. We calculate uh, depreciation time 10 years. 10 years. 10 years for the, for the, for the infrastructure. infrastructure. That's the why is it so high? Why is it going to get <coughs> spoiled and need? Sorry? Why is it, I can't understand why it's such a high number. Because the, the investment was high, but the running and operation uh, in, uh, income and cost level was, was low compared to the investment cost. Um, well, it's, it's, it's economic, I mean, uh, it's, it's right, not, not, that, not that easy to explain it in English, but to try to do it. And so relatively, because maybe it was a small uh, plot and the, the yields were not that high. It was profitable, the production was profitable, but the, the running costs were okay, but the, because of the, relatively expensive investment and the 10 years depreciation time, there was still a thick layer of, of costs to be declared in your books as a depreciation cost remained. Yes, but uh, we have to tell you, uh, we have to tell you, uh, the subsidy rate was 100%. Percent. Uh, was 100%. Yes, so it, it was, was subsidized by the government in Hungary. So the, the investor was the university. Unfortunately, in Hungary, the, the investment cost is higher than the profit share. So, so the, 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 so, no, the, 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 um, 
That's why we said, I said, we, we, we pretend that we were investors, that's why we calculated depreciation. The cash flow was okay, and you will see it was, it's okay. The other thing is the other cultivation cost, you will see that it's the, the electricity, the maintenance and repair. It was also relatively, it is also relatively high compared to the actual uh, direct uh, running costs of this, of this operation. How about the deception? Did you calculate uh, even the, the buildings? Equipment. Yeah, all the tents, the, the infrastructure, all the, the tanks. tanks, everything. Mm -hmm. It was an investment years. Ten, 10 years. Everything except the cost of the land itself. Yeah, the land was free. Okay. You ran it the whole year, so you produced also in the winter months where you had uh, to No, we were not able to produce because it was too cold for the winter. So we closed for three, three months. So we had about uh, nine months operation and, and, uh, and three is, was not okay. So the, how the, the, uh, the uh, cost structure is, ventilation, labor and seeding and, and also the, the tying things up and also the spraying uh, and also these, these uh, things are, are put together, these, these prices. So <laughs> together we say that the, the total direct cost was about 1,300 euros for the for the uh, total production area, which was uh, this kind of 240 uh, square meters. So this is about uh, the pepper total yield uh, and the the yield per per, uh, per square meter, and then those figures are there. So all these uh, direct costs and overheads uh, added together. So it was it is still say we can say it's profitable. Um, if you consider the, that you take this uh, depreciation out of the calculation, you will have a good profit on that. Is it something you measure all this, or it's literature value? It's calculated. It's it's from our our uh, results, but we, uh, we of course we didn't sell the, the product. We just made the this uh, the, the price market price. We we added together. So it was combination of biological figures and I mean growth, uh, square meter yield and the market price, but, but we didn't actually sell. The market yeah. price that you would get from the distributor? We would get, um, not from from, 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 from distributor, but from direct sale to the market. From direct sale to consumers? To consumers. Of the university or? At the university. We said, we, we tried when, yeah. Uh, we say that we think that we can sell this product to directly to consumers. University has, uh, the agriculture uh, faculty has a farm experimental land we're producing also we have 2000 hectares of arable land animal husbandry so we're selling chicken we're selling wheat selling organic peas and that's why we think that we could also sell we would be able to sell that also to to our customers local customers so it's a real real life scenario that yes you can sell it to this compared to the this um, thing that we would, we would do that we made also made this kind of sensitivity test that how uh, what about if the, the uh, yield is decreasing or increasing? And what about the price if increasing or decreasing? And we have this uh, table saying that um, what would happen if we had less than nine, than nine kilo per square meter per year? Then we had, if, what if the, the price drops or goes up? And that, that was the, well, make the, making the huge differences in that. 1.15, that was the average market price at that time of the calculation in Hungary <coughs> in retail for this, that pepper. So we had three more short more, more uh, calculations for lemon balm. As I said, uh, herbs, are, are, they love this, this uh, system. They grow, as you see, they, they grow quite good. We could harvest it uh, several times. So these were our figures. Uh, they were roughly the same uh, operating costs, uh, production costs, regardless of uh, one besides the other, it was not easy to calculate exactly to that and that and that. We said it was the same, or, or we, we, we accepted that we had a similar production cost for each of the three uh, herbs. This was the lemon balm. These were the figures of, of that. Uh, of course, being a herb, it has a relatively high uh, selling price uh, as as a uh, herb in, in, in that, that uh, area or in, in, in our, in our uh, area. The similar with the peppermint, similar production costs. 
there was some some difference with the plants and with, with the with this uh, planting and and the, um, yeah, the the planting cost was rather different the same uh, in, in the amount uh, per square meter per total yield and the the uh, sales price and also the basil it was also uh, it was a bit higher if you take uh, if you consider the the planting costs and then uh, these were the figures with the with the basil so all all three were doing well that's why we say that say that uh, we believe that um, herb production in aquaponics in a city and you have this fresh produce all or most mostly all over the year available then it makes you a good profit uh, biological plant production it is also a, an option because you are operating a closed system with a mosquito net on top so with no real external vectors can, can enter in the system but if you install these these um, insects they would they would fight effectively what as did you use for pest control in your unit? we did we didn't use anything it's just a, a, a option that we have next year so we, we were um, we don't have any any real problems with, with that we were planting some some ornamental flowers with a special smell it was repelling that I don't know the English name of that it's a small plant with, with a special smell that and then uh, I think we, have, we had to uh, spray only once the uh, we had tomatoes also with that with uh, and that's it so it's we, we, we were lucky maybe maybe it's just the beginning of the operation and we don't have any um, any, any pests uh, coming to our system but we will, we will face that soon I think this metal uh, insect traps are also available we are not using that also but it, there's also good for monitoring um, so these are our little friends we are trying to to uh, invite in the system but it's not that uh, there now so uh, the um, our main features that the system is up and, uh, and, and running with a very limited, of, um, a limited human intervention, so it's good. We say that the, uh, uh, we can have an effective production in, in aquaponics. And this organic thing uh, that we're always coming back to is uh, how, to, how can we uh, go to that, that not just organic production, but controlled or precision production, so to, to start a new uh, niche in the, in the, in the consumers mind that aquaponics is a closed system it's free of chemicals it's safe just next uh, so it's a it's a clean produce it's not contaminated by with the soil it's healthy environmental friendly so um, these um, labels that we want to attach uh, to that the produce and then say that if the produ if, if the um, the consumers would accept that with a higher price there are some certain risks, of course, and, and uh, uncertainties involved. Um, we can say it's a fragile ecosystem, but if you are stick to some basic rules, and since you're not pushing the limits too high, you can have a very stable production. You are, the whole system, the buffer ability of that system as a biological um, you know, filter in that clay ball system, and the fish are uh, stocking density is not that high, they can cooperate quite good. Basic it, basically it, that's it. So the, some conclusions that we, we, we think that, that it's a, a good option, especially for, for aquaculturists to make use of the well, relatively high amount of water uh, effluent from the, from the system and also uh, to use the um, the uh, nutrients in the water to produce a product and make uh, or diversify the activity and uh, making it economically uh, more sustainable. Thank you very much for your attention.